This is the second part of another video, you should probably watch the first part first. This video will cover framing composition, so stay tuned. What's up Survivalists, it's Chief from Team WJ here to talk to you about composition. So I've said it before, you've all heard it, I'm an editor, not a cinematographer. But if you want to learn from me what I learned from film school for free, there you go. So let me put emphasis on this again. These are not rules regardless of their names, and if they are, rules are meant to be broken. These are simple guidelines our elders laid out because this is generally what looks good. Conventions get broken all the time and new stuff is always invented. But master the basics first before you try doing something yourself. There's a reason a wheel is not a square. Okay, enough of the talking, let's start. The rule of thirds is something you all should be familiar with. If you're not, here's what it means. When you draw a grid like this on your screen, the rule states that things that line up with these dots or lines look good. It's pretty simple and you can actually develop a habit of doing this just by doing a whole ton. Practice makes perfect. You can intentionally break this rule to make it seem like something's off or not in place. However, doing this amateurly gives the impression that you just don't know what you're doing, so be careful. Depth is the theory that says that this is more interesting than this. When you put depth into a shot, it makes the image pop and stand out so much more because it's just not flat. It also gives a good opportunity to use foreground and background blur to separate your subject from its surroundings. But don't make this mistake of chucking some random long corridor in just for the sake of aesthetics. The ideal background contributes to the mise-en-scene, the overall composition, and should add to or describe the story. Now before we move on, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload a new video or tutorial to help you improve your Minecraft animations every Monday. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me and others know what composition Position tricks you use. Alright, now moving on to headroom and lead room. I'm gonna clamp these together just because they're very similar in terms of what they actually are. As the name suggests, headroom is space above the head. Now this is typically used for demonstrating that the character is thinking or to show something above his head. Metaphorically speaking, it also crushes the subject, making him lower in frame and thus inferior. His screen presence diminishes. Lead room is space in front of the character. You usually want to give lead room to show something in front of a character. Metaphorically, it's also used to give space for the character's words to flow. Now, little headroom and balanced lead room is what you generally want to go for. The headroom rule is rarely broken unlike the lead room rule. If you're making a horror animation, then listen up. Give them a lot of lead room so that there's almost no room behind them, then make them turn around slowly and pan the camera back. You see how this creates mystery because neither the audience nor the character knows what's behind them? Alternatively, reduce the character's lead room in front of them, and throw in a bunch of headroom too. Now they feel cornered or trapped. The TV show Mr. Robot utilizes this very well. Moving on, a cinematic choice every cinematographer needs to make is whether to lock the camera down or to keep it handheld. Handheld creates a sense of immersion, as if you're actually there. It also adds a sense of unstableness. Lockdown shots don't have any shake to them and create a sense of stability. Good to clearly show or establish something. Something else cinematographers need to consider is aspect ratio. You're watching this video in 16x9, most likely in 1080p. That's 1920 by 1080 which is a 16 by 9 ratio. Something you might want to do is use widescreen or 235. When you see these long horizontal videos, they're widescreen. You never want to change the aspect ratio of your animation when it's playing. I say even though I've just done it last week. I've done this for a good reason. One. His eyes squint, so this is emulating his eyes, and two, because it's a comedic parody and I can get away with doing stuff like that. If you're making a professional animation and you're trying to tell a story, you're gonna want to lock off your aspect ratio. Finally, something you want to consider is whether your subjects are moving left to right or right to left. Since most of my audience are English speakers from America, you read from left to right. Henceforth, when your subjects move from left to right, it feels like he's striving towards an end. Now this can be used and manipulated in so many ways. If your subject is moving right to left, it can mean either he's being pushed back from his goals, or that his goals weren't even his goals, or that he doesn't want to achieve his goals, or that, you know, you get the point. There's so much you can do based on this, and the subtextual potential is insane. Keep in mind that this is not every single composition rule, but just some that I picked out that I thought were most important. Hey, I make videos and tutorials every Monday to help you improve your Minecraft animations. So make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out. Don't forget that humans are pack animals. We work better together. So let me and others know what tips and tricks you use for composition. Cheers!